Hey Blender Maniacs, this is Alex Cordobard for BlenderMania3.com and in this short video we're going to take a look at some of the most popular new features in Blender 2.82. Firstly, we're going to kick it off with the new physics simulations with Blender using MantaFlow. So the physics have been completely redone, it now uses MantaFlow for fluid and for fire and smoke and it's just really awesome we have some new cool features and settings it's much more realistic and here for example with the fluid we now have the option to bake in some spray foam and bubbles how awesome is that check the link in the description for a more in-depth video tutorial on the fluid simulation in blender using MantaFlow. Now the fire and smoke simulation also uses the new MantaFlow system and no longer uses the old simulation system. You can see here under the flow type we have fire, smoke, fire plus smoke and also liquid. Now these results are much more realistic and a lot cooler and once again I'll have a more in-depth tutorial in the description down below with a link to an in-depth tutorial using and making fire and smoke in Blender with MantaFlow. Another really cool improvement in Blender 2.82 is the new cloth simulations. We now have the option to have internal air pressure. You can see here if you go to the cloth simulation under cloth, we have this new feature right here, this new setting called pressure. So you can set the internal air pressure for objects so it could act like balloons or cushions. And we also have internal springs for cloth right here. As you can see, internal springs, and this basically acts like internal springs for cloth objects and makes them act more like soft bodies. Again, I have a full tutorial on this. Check the link in the description for a more descriptive tutorial on these settings and how to do this. We now have the ability to have different viewport passes on rendered EV shading mode. So here, being in EV shading mode in the viewport, if you click down on this little drop down arrow, you can see that we have render passes. Right now it's set to combined, which is just the default normal one, but we could change it to let's say ambient occlusion to see the AO or the ambient occlusion of our scene in real time. We could also change it to normal to see the normals of our objects. And we could change it to mist to see the mist or the fog of our scene. How cool is that? So all this is all in real time and more viewport passes will be added in the future as well. Now a new feature that excites me is now we have custom bevel profiles for our objects. This is done under the modifiers tab. If you go to the modifier, add modifier bevel. Right here you can see that we have some other options as well, new options. But one of the really cool ones is the custom profile right here. And this basically will set the custom profile for your bevel. Let's increase the bevel amount right here. And then the the custom profile is dependent on your segments. So you need to have more than one segments for this to work. I'm going to put eight. And right here you can see that you could set the custom profile of the bevel with a curve. How cool is that? So very, very quickly you could make your own custom bevels using this custom profile and with the curves. This also works if you go into edit mode. For example, on this cube, select a face and hit control B to bevel that. You could then go in the options right here, check this out. You could select custom profile and then change the custom profile of that bevel. Again, need to increase the segments right here for this to take effect. And you could see that very quickly, you could create some really cool things by just adding stuff here. And look at that, that could be the pillar of a fence or something like that, the totem of a fence. And just with that, with the custom profile, we could easily customize our bevel profiles. How cool is that? We also have some improvements in the sculpting domain. If we go to the pose brush, we actually have IK chain now with the pose brush. How awesome is that? So here in the settings, you can see we have smooth iterations and pose IK segments. Right now, it's just set to one segment, so it's just posing one segment. However, we could increase this IK chain, just like an IK bone, and you can see that now we could sculpt it, and it will affect the whole IK chain of that uh, sculpt right there. And you could increase the smooth iterations for how much it will smooth the different segments. So with no smoothing or with it at one it, or zero, it won't smooth it at all. And if it's a higher number, it will smooth it a lot depending on the iterations or the segments of the sculpt IK segments right here. 
We also have a new brush here called the Multiplane Scrape Brush, which basically scrapes your geometry with two planes and leaves a sharp ridge in the middle right there. We have different settings for this over here, Topology Rake and Plane Angle, which you could play around with. Two additional settings we have in the sculpting as well is Dash Ratio and Dash Length, which basically allows for us to create dashed strokes. Now this could be very useful if you have like a piece of clothing and you want to create kind of dashed strokes. Now right here, it's not doing anything, so let's put down the Dash Ratio to let's say 0.5. And now when we draw it in, you can see it creates little dashes or little stitching. So this is very useful to sculpt in some kind of stitching type effect. And you could change the dash length. If we increase this length to let's say 40, then the dashes will be longer, as you could see right there. How cool is that? Another new brush that we have is a slide relax brush, which basically slides the topology of the mesh while keeping the volume of it. As you can see right here, it slides it and nudges it in the direction that you put your brush or that you drag your mouse. The last new feature that we're going to take a look at is UDIM unwrapping. Now this is really, really cool, the UDIM feature. UDIM stands for U-Dimension and basically allows for us to have tiled texturing and tiled UV unwrapping with our meshes. So let's say you want more detail on the face, less detail on the body, and even less detail on the feet. Well, before you would just unwrap your character onto a big image and place the different UVs on different parts of the image. But this could be particularly bothersome if, again, you want higher or lower detail on different parts of your body. So with UDIM, you could actually set any number amount of tiles that you want so that you have different resolutions on different parts of the tiles and you could place those UVs on those different tiles. To do this, just go to the UV editor, click on New right here, and the most, important uh, the most important thing you want to check is Tiled, which is the UDIM feature. And then click OK. And now it just creates a single image as before, but if we hit the End key, check it out. Here in the Properties, we now have UDIM Tiles. It's called 1001, this tile that we created. Let's go ahead and rename this to Body. Alright, and then let's create a new tile. And the body tile we created before was 1024 by 1024, but let's create one for the face. So we want more resolution or higher detail. Let's make this one 2048 by 2048. And let's just make the color of this blue just to make it a different color and click OK. Boom, and check it out, we have a new tile. Now all this is still one single image, but different tiles of it with different resolutions. Let's rename this to face. And then let's create a new image once again. We'll put this one 512 by 512 for the feet and make this green. Click OK. And there we go. We'll rename this feet. And lastly, all you want to do, select the UVs that you want to move over and you can move them over to these different tiles. And again, these different tiles have different uh, resolutions. So that's what's really, really cool. And then you could go up here and go into texture paint mode. And last thing you need to do is go to the node editor or shader editor, shift A, texture, image texture, plug the color into the base color and select your untitled or UDIM texture. And check it out. Now we could go to the image editor, change this from view to paint, go to the tool option here and you could paint or paint on your UVs of your different parts of your model that you unwrapped. And again, this one is medium resolution, higher resolution, and lower resolution. So it's really, really cool because you could set different amounts of resolution for different parts of your body that might need it. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this quick update video. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified of future videos. Join the community on BlenderMania3.com. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Au revoir.